Greetings and welcome everyone. Today is May 20, 2023 and Michael and I are back on the Skype internet and we are going to delve into Michael's topic which is something that I've heard recently in the media about a young woman that disappeared in the Vatican. Is that correct, Michael? Yes. Hello, Brett. Hello, dear listeners. Uh, we are back. And uh, this is a kind of an addition to the, uh, yeah, to the forerunner of the uh, Kennedy conspiration sessions. Yes, I found it very interesting and I would like to share some thoughts with you. I don't intend to do that very long, but I have made a small script on that. The girl's name is Emanuela Orlandi. Of course, it's an Italian name. She's the daughter of a servant of Pope John Paul II and a Vatican civilian, yes. Emanuela was not an ordinary child. Yeah, this is Vatican Girl, the disappearance of Emanuela Orlandi, an official trailer of Netflix. It's, it's quite recent, must be 2022 somewhere. Yeah, that sounds right. Yeah, mm -hmm. and I stumbled upon that and I said, okay, that's interesting because, uh, well, maybe you smell a conspiracy. Yeah. She was a Vatican girl. Yeah, you see that obelisk, <laughs> all the stuff. Yeah, um, The Vatican is not a very big country, you see. The Vatican actually is a very small country, which means uh, there are not many girls. Yeah, and she was one of them. The Vatican is a country in Europe. That's the Vatican. In German it's Vatikanstadt, so the city of the Vatican. Let's look it up. Uh, it has a population of 825, Brett. Oh, not yeah. much. Nope. And most of them are not families. No. Okay. So she is one of the few girls. She was a Vatican girl. Mm -hmm. So much, so bad. And then she was being known or getting infamous for her mysterious disappearing in Rome, of course, Rome. Or the Vatican. Vatican is a part of Rome on the 22nd of June 1983, Brett. That's is, a long time ago. <laughs> it is Wednesday and it's uh, summer holy days. Mm -hmm. And I said, oh, that's interesting because usually people would say, oh, yeah, oh, that, that was then. Ah, that's a long time ago. Mm -hmm. Okay, so they got zero result. There are many speculations. Then they were restarting the investigations in May 2012, but without any success. In October 2015, the Italian justice, uh, they were stopping any investigation once uh, once for all, but uh, they have uh, restarted that in 2019. Blah, la, 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 la. So on Wednesday, the 22nd of June, 1983, yeah, she was uh, going by bus to a music school. Mm -hmm. So she was a musician. Uh, if you like to wonder why I'm translating live one to one from German into English, it is uh, because I have prepared that uh, script here in German. I'm sorry, but of course we can also switch to an uh, English site, which is called the disappearance of Emina, uh, of Emanuela Orlandi. So, she was a teenager who mysteriously disappeared while returning home from a flute lesson in Rome on 22nd of June. Sightings of Orlandi in various places have been reported over the years, including inside Vatican City, but all have been unreliable. Her disappearance led to much speculation on the involvement of international terrorism, Italian organized crime, the Banco Ambrosiano, <coughs> you know, Banco Ambrosiano, from our mm. American rituals and conspiracy series, with the banker Roberto Calvi hanging on an orange rope with stones in his pockets, so a Freemason ritual, and a plot inside the Holy See to cover up a sex scandal. Orlando's family, in particular her brother Pietro, consistently pressed the Vatican for release of information about the case, believing that the Holy See knew more than it admitted. Well, Brad, isn't that usually the case? Mm -hmm. The Vatican always maintained strict silence about the matter, denying any accusation of involvement, but over the years many voices from inside the Holy See suggested that somebody or someone actually knew what happened to the missing girl. In 2023, 40 years after Orlani's disappearance, the Vatican opened an official investigation for the first time 
at the behest of Pope Francis. Yeah, what strikes me is uh, you see that it's it's so close to the papacy. You see, Emanuela Orlani was the fourth of five children. Her father was a lay employee in the papal household. Okay, so Orlandi usually traveled by bus to the music school located in Piazza di Santa Poliniere. She would get off after a few stops and walk at least a few hundred meters upon leaving around uh, 4 p.m. She was late to class and the weather was extremely hot. She asked Pietro, her brother, to drive her, but he had other commitments. Quote, I've gone over it so many times telling myself if I only had accompanied her, maybe it would haven't happened, he recalled decades later. At the end of the class, Olandi phoned home and explained to her sister Federica that before the lesson she had received a job offer from a representative of Avon products, so that is uh, perfume, cosmetics, etc., to hand out flyers at a fashion show for two hours. Federica told her not to accept the offer, believing the compensation to be excessive and thus unreliable and suggested discussing the matter with her parents first. While leaving school, Orlandi spoke of the job offer with two female classmates, who then left her at the bus stop in Corso Rinas Cimento in front of Palazzo Madama. It's the palace of Madame. Eh? The seat of the Senate. She was last seen around 7.30 at the bus stop in the company of another girl who was never identified. Aha. Uh -huh. Later that night, after hours of waiting, Orlandi's family began to worry and started looking for her in an area between the Vatican and the music school. They called the director of the music school to ask if any of their daughter's classmates had any information about her. Her father then went to the police to report her as missing, but they assumed that she was with friends and suggested waiting. Orlandi was officially declared missing the next morning over the text two days. The next two days, announcement of her disappearance were published in the Italian newspapers. Then, at 6 o'clock, which is 18 in uh, European format. Yeah? 1800, yeah. 1800. A phone call was received from a youth who claimed to be a 16-year-old boy named Pierre Luigi. He reported that he and his fiancé had met Orlandi. Yeah. Fiancé, sorry, had met Orlandi in Piazzo Navona that afternoon. The young man mentioned her flute, hair, and a pair of glasses. <laughs> Look. Mm at that sign, a pair of glasses that she did not like to wear among with other details that fits the missing girl. According to Pierluigi, Orlandi had just had a haircut and had introduced herself as Barbarella, stating that she had just ran away from home and was selling Avon products. On June 28, a man called himself Mario, found the family and claimed to own a bar near Ponte Vittorio between Vatican and the music school. He reported that a new customer, a young girl named Barbara, had confined, confided to him about being a runaway but said that she would return home for her sister's wedding. Two days later, a number, a large number of posters displaying Orlandi's photograph were plastered across Rome. During the Angelus on the 3rd of July, Pope John the Paul II issued an appeal to those responsible for Orlandi's disappearance, making the hypothesis of kidnapping official for the first time. Two days later, the Orlandi family received the first of a number of phone calls made by an anonymous male with an American accent who would later be called the American. The man claimed to be calling on behalf of a terrorist organization who was holding Emanuela Orlandi prisoner and demanding the release of Mehmet Ali Akcha, the Turkish man who shot the Pope in May 1981. As proof, the American played a recording of Volanti's voice over the phone. The anonymous caller also mentioned Mario and Pierluigi of the previous phone calls, identifying them as members of the organization. Despite decades of investigations, the real identity of the American has never been discovered. The next day, on July the 6th, the American informed the Agencia Nacional de Stampa Associata news agency of the demand for a prisoner exchange, asking for the post participation within 20 days and indicating that a waste basket in the public square near the Italian parliament would contain proof that Orlando was indeed in his hands. These were to have been photocopies of her music school identity card uh, received for a tuition and a note handwritten by the kidnapped girl. 
On July the 8th, a man of an alleged Middle Eastern accent phoned one of Orlandi's classmates, saying the girl was in his hands and that they had 20 days to make the exchange with Akja. Remember, that is the terrorist who allegedly shot Pope John Paul. Brett, mm -hmm. we talked about Pope John Paul in the conspiracy series with the, the involvement of uh, Mehmet Ali Aksha, quite short, but uh, you know, maybe you can remember that I highly doubt that it was a lethal attempt to kill the Pope, but it was a publicity stunt. Sure. Yep, for for public consumption, as they say. Yeah, it's it's also very, very close to the date when Ronald Reagan was officially being attacked. Yes, that's right. Yeah. He also asked for a direct telephone line with Cardinal Agostino Casaroli, the Vatican Secretary of State. The line was installed on the 18th of July. A total of 16 telephone calls were made by the American from different public telephones. On the instruction of the alleged kidnappers, an audio cassette was found near Anza's office on 17th July, which appeared to be a recording of a girl being tortured. Police told the family that they did not believe the victim to be Orlandi, although her brother has expressed doubts about that or this. However, former Digos, ah, another abbreviation, special investigation operation division, Antonio Aschiori, who first found and listened to the cassette, claimed that the recording given to the family and later published was not the original one he found. He claimed that the original recording was longer than the published recording and the male voice should be heard in the background. The presence of male voices was also reported in the original transcription of the recording made by police immediately after discovery, giving support to Astiori's claims that the recording or the published recording had been manipulated or faked. On 4th of August 1983, Anza received a written statement on an organization called itself the Turkish Anti-Christian Turkish Liberation Front later simply referred as Turkish, who claimed to be holding Orlandi in exchange for Aksha's release. Turkish sent seven letters in total between August 83 and November 85. Although they showed no evidence of Orlando's captivity, Turkish was able to provide many precise details about her private life, even mentioning the number of moles on her back. In October 1983, Turkish released a statement saying, They were also responsible for disappearance of Mirella Gregory, who had gone missing in Rome 40 days before Orlandi. Italian President Sandro Pettini made a public appeal for the girls' release on 20 October 1983, linking the two cases in a public consciousness. 14 years later, in 1997, the first investigation of the Orlando case was dismissed by the public prosecutor of Rome due to a lack of new evidence. In 2013, after a few days, After his election, Pope Francis met the Orlando family after a mass and told them that, quote unquote, Emanuela is in heaven, implying the girl's death. According to the family, this statement was proof that the Holy See knew what happened to Orlandi, despite the Vatican claiming over many years that it was not involved in the matter. Pietro asked many times to have a meeting with the Pope in order to ask for more information, but the Vatican never replied. <laughs> Are you surprised? No. 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 Of course not. Because if somebody who was listening to this broadcast here would have followed the conspiracy series, especially the last three ones, mm -hmm. we were talking about secret services. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you can go into endless theories yeah, about Turkish, Stasi, KGB, about anything else. A former Stasi, so that's the secret service of uh, former Eastern Germany. Uh, Günther Bosak said that the secret services of East Germany used the Orlando case to create a false connection between Aksha and the Grey Wolves in order to divert attention from investigations into the theory that Aksha was actually involved with the secret service of Bulgaria as he prepared his attempted assassination of Pope John Paul II. According to Mr. Bosak, it was the Stasi who sent fake letters to the Vatican, written in Turkish or Italian, in order to make them believe the Grey Wolves were holding the girls captive and wanted Aksha's release. Bonsak said the order for this operation, called Operation pa Papst, so Operation Pope, came directly from the KGB, speaking of the Russian secret service of that time. <laughs> What a mess. What a mess. 
In 2005, 2005, an anonymous caller to the Italian television program Cila Visto said that to resolve the Orlando case, it was necessary to look who was buried in the crypt of the Basilica di San Apollinare in Rome. It was discovered that the crypt contained the grave of Enrico de Pedis, leader of the Roman gang Banda della Maglia. Huh? So that is the guy of an Italian mafia or an Italian gangster of the Roman gang Banda della Magliana. An Italian crime organization. A controversy arose as to why De Pedis, a violent criminal, had been buried in the crypt of a major Roman basilica. Uh, Brad, I know of many violent criminals who have been buried in crypts in Rome. <laughs> oh, who, boy. who claim to be innocents, if you know what I mean. Yeah, a mode of burial normally reserved for high ranking figures such as cardinals. Yeah, that's what mm -hmm. I said. In fact, a newspaper article from 1997 has reported on this strange burial provoking protest from a police union, but where neither the Vatican nor Opus Dei means the works of God are the owners of that basilica, so it's an order of the Roman Catholic Church, felt the need to justify it, the matter was simply forgotten. Mm -hmm. The sure. anonymous caller of 20 of 2005 also suggested they investigate the favor that the Pedis did for Cardinal Pot Letty, implying that this was the reason for his burial as the basilica. And speaking of that, this cardinal was using a mob, the mob or the gangster, for several purposes, Brett. In 2012, the Italian Ministry of Interior confirmed that Poletti, who at the time of De Pedis' burial, was serving as president of the Episcopal Conference of Italy, and the Cardinal Vicar of the Diocese of Rome had indeed given his approval. Mm -hmm. What an honor to be buried there. Italian police subsequently opened the tomb and took DNA samples. While no clues were found in the tomb linking to De Pedris to Orlandi, the controversy prompted speculation that Banda della Maglina was involved in the girl's disappearance. I think that's the other way around, Brad. The Banda mm -hmm. della Maglia was involved in some strange operations of the Vatican or of that cardinal. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, so you have to see things as they are. Mm -hmm, right. In 2006, former Banda della Maglinia member Antonio Mancini stated in an interview that he recognized the voice of Mario, one of the anonymous callers from 1983, as a subordinate of De Pedis named Rufetto. This testimony was corroborated by Sabrina Minardi, De Pedis' former girlfriend, who claimed that Olani was kidnapped by these gangsters Banda della Magliana on the orders of Archbishop Paul Marquincus. The disgraced former head of the Institute for the Works of Religion, <coughs> Vatican Bank, commonly known as the Vatican Bank. So the Institute for the Works of Religion. <laughs> so their fruit spread has something to do with money. Uh, what kind of God are they worshipping then? Mammon. Mammon. As part of a power game. Uh huh. Sure, sure. Yeah? On Archbishop's orders. Minardi also claimed to have held a drug Orlandi captive in her apartment in Torvaianica. Why? Torvaianica for several days before moving her to another apartment in Rome. She added that she was instructed by the Pedis to drive the girl to the Vatican and deliver her to a man dressed as a priest. Minardi's credibility has often been questioned due to the shifting and sometimes contradictory nature of her story, as well as her history of drug abuse. When her initial testimony was leaked to the press in June 2008, she began changing her story, confusing the sequence of events and claiming the involvement of people who had been dead by 1983. In particular, Minardi changed Orlandi's whereabouts several times, which altogether led Italian authorities to doubt her testimony. Mancini suggested that Orlandi's kidnapping was tied to large money transactions through the Milan-based Banco Ambrosiano. <laughs> and there you got our most famous or infamous Italian banker, Roberto Calvi, Freemason, P2 Lodge, Propaganda Due Lodge, so Freemason Lodge of the, uh, of the Vatican, actually, which had been involved in both laundering money on behalf of Banda della Magliana and lending this money to IOR, the Vatican Bank. 
During those years, the Vatican Bank, led by Markinkus, was using the money to found a solidarity movement to fight communist rule in Poland, the Pope's homeland. And we know that very sincerely, because that was the headline of the Time magazine, mm -hmm. Holy Alliance. Mm -hmm. According to Mancini, following Banco Ambrosiano's collapse in 1982, the gang kidnapped Orlandi in order to force the Vatican to pay restitution. Yeah, well, you see that the Ambrosio collapse was in 82, but the kidnapping took place in 83. In May 2012, exorcist Gabriele Armoth claimed that Orlandi had been kidnapped by a member of the Vatican police for sex parties. He claimed that officials of an unnamed foreign embassy was in, were involved in that conspiracy. This allegation re-emerged with the 2016 publication of Atto di Dolore, a book by Italian journalist Tommaso Nelli, which contained an exclusive testimony from a friend of Orlandi's who claimed that seven months before her disappearance she had confided that she had been molested by somebody or someone close to the Pope in the Vatican Gardens on several occasions. Cheer. Yeah. You have to find out which story is true, huh? That uh, that takes a lifetime. An interview with the anonymous woman was mentioned in the Netflix documentary miniseries Vatican Girl, The Disappearance of Manu Manuela Orlandi, which we have uh, shown before, released in October 2022, although in this interview the woman said that this revelation occurred only one week before the girl's disappearance. On 14th December 2022, Italian journalist Alessandro Ambrosini published an exclusive recording of Marcello Neroni, a man affiliated with Di Pedris and Banda della Magliana, who implied that Orlando was kidnapped on the request of someone inside the Vatican for the purposes of covering up a sex scandal. After this, Italian authorities began searching for Neroni in order to question him. A presumed plot between Banda della Magliana and the Vatican had been already been mentioned in 2009 by Maurizio Abatino, a Banda boss who had been turned to aiding the judicial system. Vetti leaks and London trial. Italian journalist Emanuele Fittipaldi came into possession of secret Vatican documents that had been stolen in 2014, we have to believe that, in the Vatican leaks scandal. Oh, what they do, Michael. Mm -hmm. One of these documents, signed 28 March 1997, sent to Archbishop Giovanni Battista Re and Archbishop Jean-Louis Toran, allegedly shows that the Vatican spent over 483 million lira on supporting Orlandi from 83 to 97, including expenses for education and medical care. The document suggested that Orlandi had lived in London under Vatican protection for several years and that her remains had been sent back to the Vatican following her eventual death. Both the Vatican and Italian authorities regard the document as false. However, many, including the Orlando family, speculated that the documents were leaked as a warning between internal factions within the Vatican to keep the truth secret. That was not the first time the suspicion arose that Orlandi was being hidden in London on June 17, 20. 11 during an Italian television program that included Pietro Orlandi, an anonymous caller who identified himself as a former SEISMI agent, so a military intelligence agency of uh, Italy, claimed that she was still alive and being kept in a mental hospital in London. The caller also claimed that the kidnapping was carried out due to the fact that her father was aware of the money laundering involving the Vatican Bank and Banco Ambrosiano. In April 2023, Pietro Orlandi revealed that he came into possession of a 1993 letter by the then Archbishop of Canterbury, George Carey, to Cardinal Poletti. In the letter, Carey mentions Orlandi and suggests a personal meeting with Poletti to talk about the matter. The letter was made to 170 Clapham Road, London. At number 176 on the same street is the Scalabrini's father's female hostel, featured in the 2017 document where Orlandi allegedly lived under Vatican protection. This this letter lent credence to the theory that Emanuela could have been transported to London after being kidnapped. In May 2023, former Archbishop Carey rejected the authenticity of the letter. You see, this is all Wikipedia here and you can go on and on and on and on. We know what in the kind of world we are living. We're living in a satanic world. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so this is speculation, 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 speculation. Nobody knows a thing and maybe many people are remaining anonymous. 
his lawyer received an anonymous letter with a picture of the statue of an angel in Teutonic Cemetery inside the Vatican. The letter read, if you want to find Emanuela, search where the angel looks. <laughs> On the 10th of July 2019, it was announced that the Vatican would be opening two tombs inside the Teutonic Cemetery and they would then be examined by forensic anthropologist Giovanni Arcudi. The tombs were the tomb of the angel meant to contain the remains of Princess Sophie of Hohenlohe, Waldenburg, Wachtenstein, and an adjacent, help me out, ad adjacent. adjacent, adjacent one, yes. which meant to contain the remains of Duchess Charlotte Frederica of Mecklenburg Schwerin. The exhumation took place on the 11th of July 2019. Neither Orlandi's body nor those of the two princesses were found. Interesting, huh? The Vatican said it would conduct the investigation into the whereabouts of the princesses' remains. Um, shall we conclude um, that now we got at least four missing girls, the two missing Italian girls, and now two missing dead bodies? Mm -hmm. According to a report in 2019, the Vatican announced that two sets of bones had been found near the tombs of the two princesses, raising speculation that one might be the remains of Orlandi. The bones were discovered as staff probed other locations to which the princesses' remains have maybe moved with the cemetery of the Pontificial Teutonic College. Further inspection of the site revealed two oh, ossuaries placed beneath the floor of an area inside the college close by a trapdoor. Yeah, so the tombs have been found empty, and uh, that that's it, you see. Nobody knows anything, nobody knows about the whereabouts of the two Italian girls. Well, then switch, if, if you thought, oh yeah, that was a great session because he was just reading out of a, a Wikipedia script, you're absolutely, totally wrong. Let's sort things out. First of all, we can't rely to anything even to that part that everything can be made up. These people who have been uh, dealt with here were employees of the papacy, Brad. Yeah? Right. So we do not know what kind of an agenda is behind it. Yeah, so we can, we can only uh, think about reading between the lines. And I know that I have mentioned that the case of Emanuela Orlandi uh, quite uh, for another purpose, which uh, will be... Uh, revealed in a few minutes. The first thing which I was looking up to is that there actually were two kidnappings. That was in Manuela and that was another girl 40 days ago. Brad, 40 days. Really? 40 days ago. Yes, that's why, what the Wikipedia article was uh, telling you. She had been kidnapped officially on Wednesday, the 22nd of June, 83. Okay. The first thing that I do in that case is I look up the 22nd of June. What happens on the 22nd of June? Why has somebody been kidnapped on that date? And I looked, okay, that is uh, the date of uh, several Roman saints, the Holy Innocents. Hmm? I said, okay, that's, uh, that's interesting, but uh, that does not take me that far. But I came to another conclusion. I said, why don't I use some astrology on it because what is this 22nd of june bread uh you said uh what was it the 22nd you mean of a, june in the roman calendar in every calendar oh is that a uh, equinox yeah yeah right yeah spot on that is the beginning of summer that's the summer equinox. yeah yeah right yeah yeah but this is the beginning of summer that is uh, ah, yeah. yes yeah that is the beginning of summer this is uh, zero degree of cancer so that is you see the sun is standing on zero degree of cancer yeah hmm. so that is the horoscope of the event 15 hours or 3 p.m in rome italy close to but the sun is on that very uh, course here Remember that they spoke about it was the hottest day. Hmm. It was the hottest day. And I said, oh, okay, that is interesting, nonetheless. Yeah, so the disappearing and they say that was the hottest day, hottest. Extremely hot. There you go. Yeah, so it was 4 p.m. or 3 p.m., sorry, but she was later class and the weather was extremely hot. Yeah, sure, it was the start of summer. Yeah. 
Oh, it's summer equinox. It's 21st of June this year. Yeah. Summer equinox. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, in the pagan system, yes. <laughs> oh, right. No. In the pagan system. Yeah, yeah. that's right. <laughs> 20. 23.4 degrees tilt, sure. 66.6. .6. Yeah, it's all a paying system. Mm. My, my, my. Yeah, but yeah, it's, it's, it's the solar system, Michael. It's, it's the Helio sorcery, yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah, so right. That, that's a hot, hot day, yeah? Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, and so she received an offer of a, uh, somebody of Avon Cosmetics. Uh huh. Okay, you have to believe it, yeah? So a strange man uh, talks to a 15 year old girl and uh, provides her or offers her a job. Okay. So Avon products, they are distributing their products uh, upon so called Avon ladies. Mm -hmm. 10 billion US dollars they make with that. Uh -huh. Emanuela was being seen in the dark, big BMW. Yeah, there are some secrets inside the Vatican. Yes, there are many secrets inside the Vatican. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the first thing which uh, which took place was uh, three days later, Brad, at the twenty fifth of June. Three days later. Yeah, three days also an interesting biblical day, huh? Date. So mm -hmm. three days later. Mm hmm. And then you got all the stories with that Pierluigi and all the stuff, yeah. And here you see a picture of uh, of her together with the Pope, with the with the Pope Karol Wojtyla. Hmm. Isn't that interesting? The contrast to that photo. The one woman to the to the immediate left has got a frown, and the other has a smile, mm -hmm. kind of laughing. Mm -hmm. Strange. Mm hmm. Yeah, and also it's been known that many people in the Vatican are child molesters. Yeah, it's, it's been known in the Catholic Church. Yeah, and you see these are the so-called witnesses. They pumped her full of drugs. Yeah, but you see that the credibility of all the witnesses and all the people is just uh, it, it's it's not. They are, have no credibility. Yeah. So the Pope says, uh, please search for the girl. And uh, indirectly, he, he was implying that she was being kidnapped. Yeah. People question, where does he get this information? Yeah, well, <laughs> according to the Global Vatican by Sir Francis Rooney, for example, the Vatican is the head of all secret services. So they know exactly where everything has been planned and who is planning what. Yeah. So if somebody and why, yeah, and why, yes, if somebody knows anything, then it's the papacy or it's the Vatican as a, it's the Vatican well, intelligence. Well, but so. the thing is, isn't that interesting? You have the Pope dressed in white, and then you have the um, the head of the Counter Reformation dressed in black. Mm -hmm. You know, the uh, the Jesuit general. Yes. And uh, <clears throat> the Jesuit general is the one that really knows what's going on. And the Pope is just administering the Eucharist. Yeah. If you That's ask, the traditional role. If you if you ask several people, you get several opinions about that. Uh, I, well, not anymore, obviously, because Pope Francis is so oh, a Jesuit, Jesuit, as Jesuit. They are, as they are both Jesuits, you see, I think that the difference yeah. is, is, is quite marginal. Yeah. yeah, of course, of course yes, it yes. is. But you see, just you play both sides. You play the way the good... we're trained, though, Michael. We mm. are trained to believe you... that the Pope can do no wrong. You know. So when it is about Mehmet Ali Aksha, who allegedly had uh, done that uh, assault on the Pope in 1981, yeah, mm -hmm. if they claim that he was involved with the Bulgarian secret service or what else, you see that futile information because all these secret services have been controlled from the Vatican. They are putting the strings on every country. Mm -hmm. We know that. So <laughs> that is just a deception. It's another deception here. 
Yeah, so the Vatican will get in touch with you and uh, the first seconds of the call from the Vatican uh, were only being submitted, but uh, the call has was not not been uh, uh, totally transmitted, so it's useless. So it, of course it's useless. We are talking about a satanic organization, the so-called the Roman Catholic Church with an obelisk in the middle, midst of it, which is the shaft of uh, Nimrod, actually. Some say it's of Osiris, but that would just be the uh, derivative in the Egyptian uh, Freemasonry uh, belief or in the mysticism of the Egyptian uh, pagan belief mysticism. But you see, that's actually an Egyptian obelisk uh, in the midst of uh, St. Peter's Square. Come on. Yeah, of course it's a sex religion. That girl at the age of 15 had been kidnapped for... Being molested uh, is, is not far-fetched, of course, when it, especially when it happens in the Vatican. Yeah, But uh, to blame it then on, on some secret service uh, and in exchange of uh, the terrorist Ali Aksha, you see, that, yeah, do you see any blood bread? Yeah, he was supposed to be shot in the stomach. Yeah, do you see any blood? It's the same missing of blood as is in the case of Lee Harvey Oswald. Right, it's all acting. It's all acting, yeah. So there is no exchange because you see that Ali Aksha and also the Pope, they are in it. Yeah, so this is just a distraction here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If it is the KGB, CIA or the Sicilian mobster, you see, these are all working together in the Vatican, controlled by the Vatican. Yeah, so they're just pushing somebody in front and said, okay, now it's you, you are to blame, now it's the Bulgarian secret service, then it's the East, Earth, East uh, German secret service, then it's the KGB, next time it's the CIA, yeah, and people will be tossed around until they say, oh, can't stand it anymore, I'm just uh, simply like to watch soccer, hmm? yeah, yeah, but E. Howard Hunt, remember, he said the Jesuits have formed the greatest intelligence service. Yeah, the true name of the Vatican clandestine intelligence service is Santa Alianza, holy science. And doesn't the Wikipedia article speak of the involvement of Reagan and the Pope when it comes down to the Polish Solidarność movement to get rid of the Polish government in the 1980s with much money in the bank, in the Vatican bank, through Banco Ambrosiano. That's why this Roberto Calvi had been sacrificed, because he knew too much. So if you really know what that it is just coming also from the intelligence service from the from the Vatican or from the Jesuits, yeah, then it's very clearly. It's very clear. It's like in the case of Kennedy. Yeah, when you see that they don't tell it right in the face, they tell it just to the initiates. Yeah, they know what 313 means. The serpent beguiled me and I did eat. Yeah, or in other terms, uh, well, Satan beguiled me and I did shoot. If you. <laughs> Find that far fetched. You haven't seen our 50 plus sessions on Kennedy yet. Yeah. Yeah. If some exorcist of the Roman Catholic Church, yeah, what, what did uh, Jesus say that uh, a church, a house divided in its own cannot stand? Yeah, that's yeah? right. So the Roman a, Catholic Church. A house divided against itself, yes. Yes. And this uh, allegedly exorcist, Vigano, says uh, President Trump is a divine tool in the war against the children of darkness. Sure. Yeah, it's, it's hilarious. It's, it's, it's every time hilarious. Yeah. E. Howard Hunt, as a CIA spy involved in the Kennedy assassination, as well as in the Watergate so-called scandal, to get rid of uh, the president and, and other things, and to get the impression to the American public that there is some kind of democracy and free press. He said, we've always said, you know, in an admiring way, but that the Jesuits have formed the greatest intelligence service in the world and always have. That's it. You can't doubt the credibility of E. Howard Hunt, of course. But there is so much evidence. You think about the Nazi red lines, yeah? R-A-T, the red lines like the mouse. 
yeah, the red lines, where they have gotten rid of all these people, of all these Nazi criminals uh, from, uh, the, uh, from uh, Germany to the Vatican, or actually through Switzerland, most likely, and then to Spain and then to Argentina. Why Argentina? What was the land where the Jesuit Pope has been coming from? That's Argentina, José Manuel Borglio. That's the actual... See, they can't teach this to anyone. You have you have simply have to study it for yourself and figure it out on your own because mm. you're not going to get any help. No. Because guess what? People don't want to go against the uh, the apple cart. You know how they say. You know, mm. don't uh, don't disrupt the apple cart. You know, then well, none of us will get fed if you do that. Mm. You know. Yeah, that's how we. Uh, we we thrive on conspiracy, Michael, but don't say that, you know. Don't get everyone all rustled up now. Just keep it to yourself and stay, keep your lips shut. You'd be a good little secret society member. Mm -hmm. You yeah. know? Whom to believe? You see that all these people are actors, like here Jesse Ventura, foremost a wrestler than an actor. Oh, yeah. You remember Jesse and Ventura with his... Uh, with his uh, jacket that has the two, the, the double-headed yeah, eagle Yeah, the eagle on, on the back, yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. If that isn't a sign, That's, I don't it's know what fine. is. It must be a Freemason uh, reference yeah. then, huh? Yeah, or a Roman right. eagle reference, actually, yeah. Yeah, right. Uh, he, well. Yeah, for example, he says, there's a book published, JFK, The Unspeakable, that has been discovered in the Vatican, that Kennedy and Khrushchev had secret meetings or secret calls for those uh, unknown in their uh, respective governments. And that's a blatant lie, because you see that in the Vatican, it has discovered that Kennedy and Khrushchev had secret uh, talks. Yeah, why? Because the Vatican is controlling all the secret services in the world, also including the CIA. So the CIA knew from the Vatican that Kennedy was, uh, yeah, trying to get rid of them really because he got it in direct contact to Khrushchev and according to that book that uh, Jesse Ventura here is quoting I have read that book uh, particularly uh, both has has agreed to end the Cold War in 1965 uh, imagine how the world would be like today and what happened Kennedy was killed in 1963 the Pope was dying on cancer in 1963 and Khrushchev had been uh, getting rid out of the office in 1964 there were people who wanted the Cold War, and what did we get? 20 more years. Yeah, so that was his speech. I had just translated into English, but it is available nonetheless. But the, the thing is, though, everybody can write a book, and that does not tell about the credibility of the author, and of course not about the credibility of Jesse Ventura, because he's, of course, um, also a puppet on a string. He served an, an office in the United States government. Come on. Yeah, but, that's right. Yeah, but and and to top it all off, he had a series on television called Da 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 Conspiracy Theory. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Gee, the big difference is that we do not owe that that we do not make any money by doing that here. We're doing it as a service for the Lord on Sabbath. Yeah, so we are not publishing any books or so that we get get any money, but we are doing it out of uh, love for the Lord. And uh, what why Kennedy was uh, getting rid of is just about that he um, proposed the separation of church and state. Yeah, that's what he got killed for because uh, as a Catholic he had to obey the Pope, and the Pope as a supreme ruler. The Pope as the supreme ruler of the world, according to Dictatus Pape, according to Unam Sanctam, to all these papal bulls. Yeah, otherwise he would not be a Catholic. That means of that means automatically that he was a heretic, and uh, yeah, so that uh, he has been gotten rid of. Yeah, everybody should uh, could kill Kennedy uh, without any uh, restriction, according to the own Vatican papal laws. So, the name of the Vatican's own clandestine intelligence service is, according to a church militant website, Santa Alianza means Holy Alliance. So, they are into politics. And into money, of course, because to erase some kind of a so-called workers' movement on, uh, in Poland in the 1980s called Solidarność or Solidarity. Solidarity this day, uh, these days uh, were well, extremely popular. Uh, everybody who has not been getting uh, the shot bread in Germany has been accused of being, uh, you have to do it out of solidarity to for love of the people. Mm -hmm. 
it's an act of solidarity oh, to get the shot sure mm -hmm. yeah Another this is solidarity huh mm -hmm. yeah solidarity in the new world order yes solidarity with satan yeah, yeah. exactly yeah, and so they claim that the Ali Aksha, the alleged uh, assassin on Pope John Paul, um, the head and order of the Bulgarian Secret Service. That's hilarious because it's once and for all the biggest and the greatest and the headquarter, the HQ of all secret services is in the Vatican. Yeah, so it is another deception here. It's another deception. That's totally deception. Everything about Ali Aksha is uh, deception. Yeah? If it is Bulgarian, German, it's deception. There was Operation Pope in the documents of the East uh, German Stasi Secret Service. Yeah, there are many documents and you can fake and forge any document. That's not a problem. And uh, in that is also the case of Manuela Orlandi, yeah, who had been kidnapped uh, uh, for and uh, the, the blame on it has been uh, put to Turkish uh, Muslim people. Sure, it's, you can toss it and turn it around. One month ago, another young lady in Rome had been uh, kidnapped. Yeah, it's always young ladies. It is not young girls. It is young ladies. Interesting, huh? Yeah. So nobody knows a thing. Yeah. Yeah. And if it is CIA or another thing, that that's not a problem. And uh, yeah, when the police uh, look to the wastebasket near the parliament. Guess what they found? Not another Bible like uh, Mr. von Tischendorf read, not the Codex Sinaiticus. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if if uh. anybody really, if anybody should really think uh, another think about that, uh, that story is true, that von Tischendorf found the manuscripts of the Codex Sinaiticus in a wastebasket in uh, some monastery. I can't help it. I can't help it. These are modern fairy tales. You you think about the stupidity of the other monks or what? Yeah. Nobody. Yeah. Well, the, the the problem is is that people just buy it. Yeah. They don't look into it. They don't research it. They oh you look at this man. Oh, this manuscript makes so much more sense than mm. everything else. Yeah. Right. Sure it does because you're getting paid to say that, <laughs> and yeah. everyone just buys into it because you yes. know we went through all these yeah, the, world the, wars and all this politics and stuff and. You know, people are so fed up with everything. They just, okay, whatever. Just, you know, but what do we call that? We call that a pushover, Michael. Yeah. Right. Yeah. They just push you over. Mm hmm. Yeah, so we pay for it. You know, we, our we children pay, pay for it. We pay for it, yeah. So the date of the 20th of July had been named. So the Pope or the papacy, they know nothing Yeah, about that, of course. Yeah, but there's a state secretary and then the recording has been uh, abruptly ended and the Vatican does not tell anything, of course. Of course, they know everything. Yeah, and uh, the Vatican is ordering the Secret Service of Italian. Yeah, but not only of Italy, but also of another uh, uh, Secret Service. So everybody knows that the Vatican is involved in that, but nobody knows anything. And they tell you that there are two sorts of terrorism, a national and international. That's absolutely uh, untrue. There is just one, and that is state terrorism. Yeah, all this terrorist attack has been made by states to the Hegelian dialectic to fear people and to have a certain mindset, a certain frame that people have been feared and they wanted to be protected from the state. So that serves a certain purpose. Yeah, so it is, of course, uh, the involvement of the, the mafia or the mobster and uh, these gangsters as well as with the Vatican. And there you have already a connection between organized crime and the Vatican. Yeah, that's, uh, that's so obvious. You can look up this uh, documentary, by the way. Yeah, you can look up the, event, the uh, documentary on your own from Netflix. Yeah, but it's just a BS story, yeah, because uh, they will put you in the same line as Kennedy. They will put out some information uh, two years later and then two years later and somebody knows, knows something and somebody is calling. Then another anonymous caller is coming in and uh, I don't buy anything of that. Yeah, and I, I know why, Michael, and I know why, because you've looked seriously at the 
what do we call it? The extreme oath of the Jesuits. Mm -hmm. And when you do that, you do the research and look into the full text, you realize that it's basically, again, a matter of opinion. And that, uh, you know, in order to allow a religious organization and institution to produce something to this manner and to conduct it without any investigation is uh, absurd. And uh, it's sad. I mean, that, that's the kind of world we live in is uh, you, you have a, uh, a harlot that the Bible calls this system a harlot hmm. and it is uh yeah i mean we are well into the the last days of it i think michael i who knows it could be years in advance of uh you know there might be there might be pushbacks and there might be setbacks and and the uh the the worldly timeline might change, but the prophetic timeline will never change. Once the prophecies are fulfilled, then it's done. Hmm. We're getting close, no doubt. But who can say how close? I can't tell you. No, I think that nobody can, and that's also good. But we are not here to be prophets. We are just here to try to uh, put some shed some light on these events that are happening. You see, when Pope Francis tells the parents that uh, Emanuela is now in heaven, he surely has to know something. Yeah, if that is correct statement, yeah, he surely has to know something. But that's not also not my point. Uh, I'm not particularly interested in this Emanuela Orlandi case if it would not serve another purpose. Yeah. Mm. So the Vatican officially had spent 340,000 euros for the education and nobody knows anything. You see, they can't rely on any sources. You cannot doubt the official sources and then you can believe uh, the alternative uh, truth. Yeah. You see that these are all coming from the same source, actually. It's all being controlled by the Vatican. Yeah. So they are playing tricks on you, good versus bad or truth versus lie or what else and, and I black don't versus that. white yeah yeah black versus white yeah so if it you see that that is just to undermine in the long run maybe also the credibility of the church it's what i say in the beginning that they will come up with a new church uh, with uh, so kind of uh, for example an artificial mary on top hmm? yes and if you think that is far-fetched, then uh, yeah, you see the first female robot is called Sophie, la? like sophistry. Yeah? And Sophie means uh, wisdom. Yeah? That's artificial. Yeah? That's Sophie. Mm -hmm. huh. Yeah, and uh, yeah, she is an official, she's a civilian of Saudi Arabia. What a pain in the neck for all these Saudi Arabian uh, girls and, and women. It's, uh, it's it's unbelievable this world is unbelievable yeah it's unbelievable it was activated on valentine's day ha ha <laughs> 2016 the, the, huh the robot modeled after the ancient egyptian queen nefertiti Audrey Hepburn no, and his inventor's okay. wife ha ah, yeah <laughs> mm -hmm. she was introduced to the united nations yeah which are belonging to the vatican huh Roman Lawrence the guys, girls. Ah, <laughs> yeah. Ah. You have been awarded what is going to be the first Saudi citizen citizenship for a robot. Ah. Hi, my, my, you see the world is so dumbed down. Well, yeah, not only that, Michael, I mean, go back in history and who comes up with the idea that we have to have sovereign laws? Mm. I mean, who is sovereign? What is sovereignty? Mm. I mean, it's such a mockery, Michael. How far do you want to take it? Do you want to take it that far? If you believe that your children are being possessed by a demon, would you ask that guy? <laughs> that is the chief exorcist of the Roman Catholic Church. Yeah, and that is when he is smiling. Yeah, think of him when being angry. Yeah, but I'm not talking rude about anybody who has been seized yet, but 
it's it's just hilarious you see that the people do not read the bible yeah yeah you see that everybody women are being attacked yeah everybody also lara logan uh, faced a serious attack on especially also on her life when uh, being uh, reporting from cairo yeah so that people who are in a certain belief system against women or do as thou wilt or what else yeah they do everything they do everything you see that religion is is a is a is a, is a doctrine yeah to to be free from doctrines and then you really see the truth uh, yet th these people are all also being tricks on you yeah and uh, yeah and and what michael means is being freed from false doctrine because there's only one truth Mm -hmm. And there's only one truth that we have a Messiah. Mm -hmm. And if you don't believe that, well, then you don't belong on this channel. Right, Michael? I only try to get people to do their own research and then do their own thinking. If two girls are missing in 1983, 40 days apart, and they are both 15 years old, <laughs> One of them is a civilian of uh, the Vatican, of Vatican City. Yeah, so they tell you there are both 15 and 16. Here is 15 and 15. Ani means uh, the age. Yeah, I can show you several pages about everything. But I just want to use that Emanuela Orlandi case for just another thought, because I promised that would not be a, a long session. So it's interesting that we achieve 40 years later this year, Brad, in 2023. Yeah. So it was the 27th, 22nd of June, 1983. So next month, in uh, or when this video has been published, uh, is uh, the anniversary of 40 years. Yeah. And still, the parents officially do not know where uh, about the whereabouts of that girl. Question, Michael: Do the parents know about the history of the papacy? Mm -hmm. You know, have they have they looked at what Protestantism is and how that contrasts to their religion? Have they seriously looked at it? I wonder. <laughs> if they are dependent from the Vatican because he was a lay papal servant, I highly doubt that. Yeah, me too. Right. I highly doubt it too. But uh, looking all through these documents, which I found, I stumbled about uh, this Italian newspaper mm. about the 18th of November. I do not know what kind of year bread about Emanuela Orlandi Vaticano also Nunciatur. And that article is only available in Italian language. Okay. Because of the. Um, of the uh, remains of the ex carving of some uh, 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 tombs and all the stuff yeah mm. but let me let me take you on the tour of that article here which i found interesting yeah this is not official wikipedia although wikipedia does mention it with one uh, one brief sentence well you know the pope is known for his bull mm -hmm. <laughs> couldn't help it in the official Wikipedia nowadays, you find uh, that remark. In November 2018, during restoration work, several human bones were found under the floor of one room assigned to the janitor of the annex. An investigation carried out by the Vatican judiciary revealed that the human remains dated from before the 19th century, refuting the hypothesis that they could have belonged to the body of Emanuela Orlandi. You know what kind of a building that is? That is the Georgina Villa. That's the villa in Rome. It's the seat of the Nuncios, Apostolic Nuncios in Italy. Yeah, so it is not an official uh, place, but uh, Villa Georgina. Yeah, Villa Georgina, head of the office of the Apostolic Nunciatur in Rome, Via Pono, where bones have been found. Yeah, and of course the parents would like to, to know if that were the bones of the remains of her beloved child, but uh, officially 
They tell you these are human remains in the time before the 19th century. Okay. <laughs> but uh, Wikipedia in German, for example, tells you another thing. Or uh, it refers actually to this uh, Italian newspaper. You see, that is the Apostolic uh, Nunciatur in Rome, where they have found the remains. And now let me let me just translate that from Italian language to English, okay? Mm -hmm. To hope, or perhaps the illusion of linking the bones found in Villa Giorgina, the headquarters of the Apostolic Nunciatur in Rome, to the disappearance of Emanuela Orlandi, finally fades with the first results of scientific examinations. They are, say the experts in charge, the remains of a male skeleton dating from before 1964. The mystery of the girl who disappeared into thin air in 1983 and the probably related one of Mirella Gregory, this remain once again without solution. The vital information which uh, burst brought me to laughter was that sentence where the experts yeah. say the remain of a male skeleton dating from before 1964. Oh, yes. How can before anybody... 1964 implying... Implying, da, da, da. That, implying that somebody has died in what year? Before 1964, which means 1963. Okay. How can anybody have a solution uh, to, to 1964? Why should anybody mention that here? Why does not anybody say, oh, it must, must at least be 20 years old, Brad? Why on right. earth would anybody state any year? Ah, because they're admitting to you something. They're admitting to you something and uh, I told you before, I knew that some months ago when I was doing that research here and you know, who was the most famous bun who was being killed in 1963? <laughs> yeah, there you go. There you go. Not saying that it is, but you see that it, it's, it's very strange. Yeah, officially now they're claiming, oh no, it's 19th century. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but that Italian newspaper says it is before 1964. So maybe somebody is just having a great laugh in the Vatican. That's what got me into looking into the case of Emanuela Orlandi. You're right, because you see, when they do that, they can say, see, we told you. Mm. We told you. You just didn't read into it right. It is just one Italian newspaper, Brad. That's it. Yeah, I will show you the direct link to that article here. Hmm. Yeah, it's it's these days, you see. Oh, it's just for your protection huh, that you don't get any information in time. Yeah, this is the article here. Skeletro, so maybe skeleton, maschile, so male, yeah. Risalente a prima del 1964. Mm -hmm. But don't you worry, just be, uh, look at this and look at soccer and look at a beautiful woman and what else. <laughs> yeah, don't get uh, harassed by the truth. Yeah, so I can only offer this because I'm not an authority that I could now interview somebody from an Italian uh, newspaper. Yeah, so you have to stick with it. But you see that uh, kidnapping girls in the Vatican, the Pope does, says uh, that, oh, sure, she's in heaven. Nobody knows a thing. Putting the blame on any secret service, although the secret service are being controlled by the Vatican himself. And then an Italian newspaper who tells you that, oh yeah, the remains under the episodic uh, nunciatur in Rome, they are belonging to a male skeleton who died before 1964. Yeah, so that is the case of Emanuela Orlandi. Yeah, and uh, yeah, just keep busy with clothes. Yeah, and uh, oh, you see that you, you've been bombarded with useless information.
And that's uh, my two cents on Emanuela Orlandi and why it would fit into the conspiracy series, Brett. So that is uh, my status quo at the moment. I'm not digging in deeper into this because I got a quite new subject coming up. And uh, so that's, uh, you may try to shut down this uh, session now. Thanks for having me and looking forward to the next one. All right, Michael. Yeah, thanks for putting all the research into it, all the thought and time it takes to read all the articles. And, you know, in this day and age, uh, we don't really get much help. And um, it's great to know Michael because Michael comes at it from a very interesting perspective and uh, really appreciate your time and energy, Michael, and look forward to the next sessions coming up. And I hope everyone's doing well out there. And <laughs> yeah, the Minnesotan here, huh? Mm -hmm. JFK painting. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, they tell see. you, they tell you right in the face if you know their language. Go ahead, Mike. Why, why should they display that kind of a picture? We have talked about it in the uh, earlier conspiracy theories. Why would they show such kind of a picture? Yeah, for the Vatican. Yeah. When oh, it does oh, it's simple. The, the Scarlet Woman. Yeah, sure. Well, she's wearing yeah, drenched with blood on her feet, oh, like the go. red shoes, yeah. like there the red go. shoes bread. Ah, yeah, yeah. The heretic. <laughs> yeah. 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 The the shedding of the blood of the heretic, like in the extreme oath of the Jesuits. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, yeah, I mean, look at the way she was rewarded, you know. Mm -hmm. She served her purpose. Yeah. Jack, Jackie served mm -hmm. her purpose. Yeah, and, well, she, shut, and she, she was uh, instructing the doctors to shut off the life support of JFK's yeah. brother, Robert Kennedy, as well. Right, right. Mm -hmm. And afterwards, she married a billionaire. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so from millionaire, Jack Kennedy, yeah, to billionaire, Knight of Malta, Aristoteles, Onassis. Yeah. <laughs> what a world. Yeah, that's right. That's the world we live in, Michael. If you once have figured out that the book of Revelation talks about the Church of Rome, when it talks about the Babylon the Great, mystery Babylon the Great, yeah, then everything is really connected. Yeah, yeah Revelation 17 and 18, yeah. Mm. I love the way it starts out, you know, with mm. the... And uh, the the angel that had the seven vials came and talked with me and said, Come hither, I will show unto thee the judgment of the great whore who sitteth on many waters. Yeah, I was thinking about that verse yesterday as I was driving through St. Paul. Mm -hmm. And uh, seriously, I, I view where I live uh, as a very, very, very deeply embedded uh, Catholic community that has no idea the uh, the biblical truth behind the whole matter, and uh, they they mask their their uh, belief in Christ. It's all vain. It's all vanity, man. They don't go as far as we do here on this channel, and sadly, I think. The rest of the world is very much entwined in this, and we're just seeing a world that has been so cloaked in Catholicism, Roman Catholicism. It's it's really something. It it's amazing. I'm I'm amazed that the Lord has revealed it to us, Michael, and I'm very grateful for that. And. Uh, We'll just close down the session on that note. Thank you, Michael, again for the conspiracy series and looking back on it. And uh, yeah, that, that might be the end of it for the conspiracy series. We might touch on it again if something comes out in the near future. And uh, I know that Michael has expressed uh, concern over, uh, uh, was it Robert F. Kennedy Jr.'s bid for election in 2024? 
yeah we we will look uh, upon that uh, with uh, yeah with uh, great concern because robert f kennedy jr of course is controlled opposition yeah uh, right of course yeah. and you see that then when <laughs> in the article of emanuela orlandi it's been called or been named or mentioned that the skeletons remain to a male body uh, died before 1964 i said come on that's uh, it's, it's it's it, it at least it's very strange it is very strange yeah because you see that 1963 uh, <laughs> do your own research do your own research and come to your own conclusions that the bible is always correct and that the only path to salvation is not john f kennedy and it will not be john f kennedy or robert kennedy jr yeah the only path to salvation would be jesus christ Yeshua HaMashiach. Yeah, that will be the only path to salvation. Yeah, you can spare out any election and uh, ignore yeah, any television. Right. Yeah, it won't help you. It just keeping to deceive you into this material world where everything is uh, money and power and glory and fame and uh, do what thou wilt. But uh, this actually is the story of uh, the Vatican involved in another conspiracy. So much I think you can agree. And the Vatican involved in another crime, which uh, the Vatican is not willing to solve yet, after 40 years. What do you need to know more about this Roman Catholic Church? They have their own bank. Yeah, Jesus said you can't serve two masters, either you can serve God or the mammon. Yeah, they have their own bank. You see, that is so obvious. But usually people have 70 or 80 years on their back. And what will you say then when it is the final judgment? Oh, sorry, uh, uh, Eloise, sorry, uh, dear God, almighty Lord. Yeah, I haven't had enough time or what? to read the Bible, to understand, but we know that we can't pull anybody to the Bible. They have to be pulled by God himself. So we can only show you what this world is about and where all the mess started. And the mess, of course, started in the Garden of Eden with the forbidden fruit. Genesis 3.13, as well as the 3.13 picture in the Sapruda movie. So I'm not, not closing it down. Please, Brett, hand it over. Yeah. Yeah, that's great. And I think that that pretty much sums it up. You know, it's it's uh, we are uh, subject to Christ and Christ alone because it's his glory that needs to be lifted up. It's his duty that needs to be lifted up. It's his purpose that needs to be lifted up. And we are the ones that need to be humble and to point to the Messiah, and that's what we do. We point to our Messiah who came to set us all free. And thanks again, Michael. We'll catch up with you next time. God willing, Maranatha. <laughs>